Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. You can do better than what you are doing tonight. Let the heavens hear your shout. Do I have some living souls in the presence of God? Let the heavens hear your shout one more time. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands wherever you are. And close your eyes. I want you from this moment. Let something flow out of your spirit. As we are sent tonight. To the throne of grace. That he who showed mercy upon his people. Will show us mercy. Let something flow out of your spirit. Kabosh. Let something flow out of your spirit. Keep my see hand abos kata bro kata. Maki kapos seki hande kando sahande kapos le kapanto ki prakipos iko kanta. Mako ki kase ante kapanto kapra kapas sahande kapo le kapante kapra kipo kapante ya iko kapa ko kapra kapas sakata pa. Ake kapon ta kapra kipo kapante kapra kapa koka pa le kapa koko ko pra kapa sakante kapo kapa i kapra kipo sante kipanto kapra kapa koka ka aki kapra kapa sonda kimanto kapo le kapa koko shahata kapo ta ha i kapra kipo ta kapanto i kapa kaka pra kapa i koko shahata kapra kapa let the flow out of your spirit kapante aba i kapa koka pra kipo shahada ba i kapa ko le kapa kapa kato kapra kapanto ha i kapante ya i koko koko shahada i kapante ya ako kapanto handa ha i koko shaha le pra kapa kapa Ako sahanta kapa le kapa ko kapra kipo sahanda ba le kapa ko kapra kipo sahanda ba le kapa ko shabante pra kipa le kapa ko kapra kipo sha i kapa to ya pra kapa aka pra kapa shanta ba i kapra kipo to kapa shall we move to another reality in the spirit tonight? We are going somewhere tonight. The Lord said, "Come, oh my God." Let go see and take a pante a pole. Make my sabbath. Shall we go where the Lord will find us tonight? Let me see and take a pante a pole. Let me make a pile and take a pante a pole. I go cut a pole. Let me sante a pole. I can see and take a pole. Let me put a bracket by Santa pole. Let me take a pante a take a pole. Let me see and take a pole. I can make a pile a pole. Le ko saya taba, le ka panto ya taba, le ka panto ya braka ba, le ko saya taba ba, aka pasi ya taba panto ya ba. I want to see the Lord tonight. I don't know about you tonight. Si ya toki masi ya taba panto ya ba. We have been running with men for far too long. Tonight, oh God, yes, si ya toki hando ya ba. We want to see Lord. We want to see your cup and your hands. There is a reality of God in the spirit that the Lord is bringing us tonight. Somebody let it flow out of your spirit. Shall we climb up into that reality tonight? This Sayan take a bow. I can see and take a bow. I go Sayan to bow. I bow. Let me see and take a bow. Let me see and take a bow. Let me see and take a bow. Let it flow. Saki kapayaba, we are not there yet. Yes. Siya te kapanto yaba, le kapante kapa. There's a place for our crowning tonight, and the Lord decided that we find ourselves in that place. Kate abo sahande kapa, kasi ante kapanto yaba, le kapanto kapa kipo sahanda, e kapanta kapa kipo sahanda. It's a place that the Lord will make somebody tonight. Say kapanya payaba. He's going to make somebody tonight. He said, "Come in, O God." Saya takapa, katoya pentayapa, leko 
I see the brand of your back. I see the whole of oil ready tonight. And the Lord said, Come, 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 come. See a book of my yaba. See the point of yaba. The garment of decoration is ready tonight. Saka baya tata taba. Ako saya taba. Imanto kapanto yaba. Aka braka baba. Aka panto kapraka basanda ba. Aka yaba. Ako koko koko sa. Ika panto kapraka basa. Aya panto yaba. Leka siya tata ba. Aka pata yaba. Saka panto kaba. Saka panto kaba baba. Raka baba ba. Baya baba. Baka baya ba. Baya.
tonight you take charge over this atmosphere that you look upon us with mercy oh God that only your voice will be heard among the congregation we take charge over every power of Satan and we say that Lord only your will will be done among your people have your way tonight let your will be done somebody put your hands together and take your seat I want to thank God for this great privilege he has given unto us to fellowship with one another in the presence of the Most High. And I bring you greetings from the Gold Coast, West Africa, Ghana. I bring greetings from the entire remnant family in Ghana. And I also bring you greetings from my beloved wife back home. In fact, I'm excited to be among you. This is my first time in the eastern part of Nigeria. And I, I have seen your work on the internet. I've been following steadily the progress, the hunger, the hard work and the sacrifice in this powerhouse. I call it a powerhouse because the kind of power you generate from here crosses the borders to the nations of the world. And we have been partakers of this wonderful move and grace in this house through the servant of God, Apostle Edu, and the family in Anambra. I want to salute the angel of the house, even though he's not here with us. Let's put our hands together and appreciate the servant of God. The way you are clapping for, for our man of God, let's give him a standing ovation. The new couple in town, across the nations of the world, the latest. <laughs> you don't know what it means to be choice with our man of God. There are some of you, you are believing God for a marriage. And until you rejoice, <laughs> I don't know whichever way God is going to do it. Hello? So if we are able to join people who are mourning, let us also rejoice with those who are what? Rejoicing. Let's do it again for our seventh again. Are you 
person we know you are watching us we love you so much let's shout that person we love you hallelujah please take your seat the servant of god has really been a blessing to us and we had no option to fly all this way to this place to be part of this wonderful ceremony and uh, one thing that I would say is that your, your man of God is a blessing we are, we are still checking to see how you receive him and how you take care of him here because if care is not taken we will relocate him to Ghana Hello. Yes, yeah, so if you don't want us to take him to Ghana, then please take very good care of him well. Okay? Apostle has been a blessing to us when he visited us for our power conference. It was awesome, amazing. Many lives were impacted, many lives were touched. And I, I, I want to say that I'm happy for you that is here sitting under his feet. My plea is that you remain committed and follow with all your heart and support him with your strength and your substance. As you see him like that, there is many more things about him you don't know. It will take God to reveal them to you. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord will give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. All right, let's turn quickly to the, the Bible. I want to share something the Lord laid on my heart. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I believe you have the message translation quickly. I want to stay up our spirit and our heart to pray tonight. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Hmm. He says, this resurrection life you receive from God is not timid. It's a grave-tending life. It's adventurously what? Expectant. Greeting God with what? A childlike what's next, Papa? I love message. If message begins like this, then you should expect something heavy coming. Hallelujah. Now let's move on quickly. This is not my emphasis for tonight, but I want to, I want to show you something. He said, God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really what? Ah. We know who he is and we know who we are. Father and what? Children. So he said, the spirit of God testifies with our own spirit that we are what? The children of God. We are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So, you don't need any man to tell you who you are or to show you identity. The spirit bears witness with your own spirit. And that is the reason why the Bible said that as many as are led by the spirit, they are what? It is very important for you to understand that we are living in a spiritual world even though we are on planet earth. It is spirit to spirit. Hello? For you to understand the rules of engagement of this kingdom. Where we are and where we are going. We will need the Holy Ghost. So now Paul is telling us in the book of Romans. That the spirit is a buried witness with our spirit. That we are what? The sons of what? And the daughters of what? Of God. Hello? Now something follows. Let's move on quickly. Verse 17. He said and we know we are going to get what is coming to us. An unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ would go through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we are certainly going to go through what? The good times what? That settles the matter of the many questions that today's believer will keep on asking. Pastor, when? When is it going to happen? I'm going through a lot of far too long. It's been years. I came to tell somebody. There is something heavy 
that is something that your mind or your heart cannot take. That is beyond the imagination of what man that is coming. Oh, Jesus. And I love the next verse. Verse 18. Oh, Jesus. He said, that is why I don't think there is any comparison between the present hard times and the coming what? Good times. When you read the King James Version, he said, for I reckon that the present day suffering can never be compared to the glory that will be revealed in what? In us. There is a coming glory. I came to tell somebody. I said, there is what? A coming glory that can never be compared to your present what? Suffering. He said, if he suffered, then we must also suffer with him. And he was glorified. We must also be glorified. Wherever you are or your present condition is not permanent. The Bible said that for our light afflictions, which are for, which are for but what? A moment. Oh my God. Bible describes the things that you go through as light. Because he knows that the coming glory is heavier. It cannot be compared to what? Your present time what? Suffering. I came to encourage somebody tonight. You have been going through things for far too long. But I came to tell you, as the Bible said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I see your end glorious. I see the glory of God being revealed in you mightily. If you believe you put your hands together for Jesus. He said it can never be compared to our present time what? Suffering. If you have seen your man of God get married today, don't think that he just came. The Bible said that our, our, our Messiah is seated on the right hand of our Father interceding for who you and I. Do you think he just woke up and got there? He suffered. What I call early morning spirit. Someone that did no wrong. Because men decided to do what? To what? Make fun of him and put him to shame. They spat on him. A man with no sin. Just because he wants to fulfill assignment. Let me tell you. If you want to fulfill assignment and the will of God. Men will despise you. Men will spit on you. Men will insult you. But I came to tell you. It's part of the story. For the glory that is coming out. The glory that is bringing out of that suffering can never be compared to the things that were done to you. Tell your neighbor, be encouraged. For as far as the word of God is concerned, you are in the process. God is making you. If we are co-heirs with Christ, if we enjoy the same inheritance with Christ, we share the same inheritance with Christ, you can't tell me that Christianity does not come with suffering. Christianity comes with suffering. I came to tell somebody. When you suffer small, the Bible said that we should count it pure joy. When we go through what? That one we don't want to hear. He said, for the testing of our faith is laid bare. So that you and I will not be deficient in what? In any way. That is the reason why God must allow certain things to happen. Do you think that it was a pleasant situation for Jesus to go through that kind of humiliating death? He said, Father, oh, can this cup, can it pass? He said, no. And he realized that he was on planet Earth to fulfill what? An assignment. To fulfill the word of God. So he said, Father, let your will what? Be done. Can you say that in your prayer? The Father, it is true that I have no money to feed. I have nowhere to lay my head. It is true that I have been praying for 15 years. I have not seen what your hand. But let's, let your word, your will be done. Let us be reminded that the present time suffering can never, I say can never, be what compared to the glory that is coming. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now let's move on to the main meal for tonight. I brought that to encourage somebody. 
Because as I stood here, one of our spirits communicated to my spirit, that Father, when, when is this thing going to happen? We have fasted. They say we should fast. We have fasted. We have been praying. If people like prayer, the kind of prayer you generate from here, I don't know where you get your energies from. The engines that you carry, maybe it's not yet manufactured. I don't know. So in all your prayer, somebody will be asking, ah, have we not prayed enough? Can't we see the hand of God at least? Can't we enjoy small? Look at the heat and the sweat. After prayer, you feel in your ribs that there's a dislocation in your ribs. Yet, nothing is happening. I came to tell you, Kai, something is about to happen. I said something is about to happen. Your life and your destiny will never be the same. You will never be like this, oh God. I came to tell somebody that the coming glory is heavy. Prayer is work. How can you be talking to a spirit for hours? It is not natural. You are praying. Who are you praying to? Have you seen God before? Who has seen God here? But yet, God is helping us to do what? The supernatural naturally. We are communicating with the spirit. For 10 hours, for 12 hours, for 15 hours. And yet, you are not seeing anything. One of the things you don't know is that if God opens your eye for you to see what your prayer does for you, the kind of groanings and the kind of prayers that you make in this place, unknowingly to you, you are affecting nations. In fact, your locality or your local territory is too small for you. With the engine that you carry. That is what you don't know. So if you are thinking that the economy of Nigeria will be better for you to, for your life to be better, you wait for a very long time. Because we don't depend on the economy of this land. We yes, depend sir. on the economy of God. Yes, for survival. Yes, when God makes something out of nothing. And that is why we pray. That is why we cry. Because our source of ventilation, strength, comes from above. If you are waiting for the Nara to get better, for your information, the city is gone bad. Yet, people are building houses. People are buying mansions. What you want to see will come from above. And God will not look at their present conditions for him to make available. There's a glory coming. There is something that will blow your mind. Something that your mind cannot comprehend. Yes, Tell your neighbor, encourage yourself. For there is a coming glory. You, you think you are living in a village. You don't know what you have. Oh my God. Go to the city and see how they are suffering. At least you can pray. Meanwhile, I know that the greatest force on planet Earth is what? The force of prayer. You can be in this territory and be issuing decrees across the borders of the nations. You don't know what you have. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. Hmm. All right. Now, take me to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. MSG, quickly. You see, two things happen when you are not seeing the glory of God or the hand of God in your life. Number one, it is possible the will of God or the, time, or the timings of God is not right for, for you to see the manifestation. The other, it's when you are living below the standard that God has set for you. 
I said, two things can be happening. I know that some of us, we have been delayed for far too long. But in the delay, it is not the making of God. It is our own work doing. So if you have been pressing and pressing and pressing for years and months on a particular matter, and you are not seeing the results that you want to see, you must ask two questions. Father, are you the one behind it? Or I am the cause of it? Now, look at what is happening here. He said, look, listen, God's arm is not what? Amputated. He can still what? He saved our forefathers. He made a way in the Red Sea. Oh, my God. He delivered his people from the land of slavery. The Bible said by his mercy. He brought down case to save his people. He killed. Some of you, witches and wizards and demonic activities surrounding your life, do you think that God cannot do anything about it? He can do something about it. But the truth of the matter is that there is something about your life that you must work on. So he's saying that what? His hands are not what? Amputated. He can still what? Save. He has saved before. And he will continue to save. And even the generations to come, he will save. Because the Bible said that before God created the heavens and the earth, we were part of what? The plan. So then why did we come? If we are part of the plan, you and I are part of the plan, why did we come? Now look at what is here. He said God's ears are not what? Stop up. He can still what? So for the doubting Thomases, ah, Papa, are you still hearing this prayer that I've been praying for two years now? He can still what? Now let's move on. Look at something here. He said there is nothing wrong with who? Tell your neighbor. There is nothing what? I want to settle some matters today. So that when you sleep, you can sleep. Because some of you are not able to sleep because there is a state of confusion in your minds. You don't even know what is happening. You are confused. In fact, the confusion in the body of Christ today, <laughs> some <laughs> bishops don't even understand. But I bring you understanding tonight through the word of God. He said what? There is nothing what? Wrong with God. The wrong is in what? It's in you. Somebody would say, Pastor, why? He said what? Your wrong-headed lies cause the split between you and who? And God. He said your sins got between you so that he doesn't what? Yeah. Now, the issue about sin. When we talk about sin, what we look at is fornication, adultery, stealing, murder. But there's one dangerous sin that I've come to discover in my years in, the, in, in, in my work with God for many years. And that is the sin of disobedience. There's what we call the sin of pride. Disobedience. Pride. Even in your prayer, even in your prayer, sometimes you are proud. Oh, you want me to prove that to you in scripture? The Bible said that two people went before God in prayer. One was a publican. And one was a Pharisee. The Pharisee showed up at the place of prayer. He said, Father, I pay my tithes every month. I pray a number of times in a week. He said, I am not like this word, unbeliever. He said, I give. That is the kind of prayer he went to offer. And the Bible said that the publican came to God. He said, have mercy on me. So Jesus now told the disciples, among the two, who was justified before the law? He said, to us, that which word prayed and asked for the mercy of God. So sometimes in your prayer, you can be proud and it is sin. I, I want to balance something here. We are a praying people. But sometimes we pray amiss. Somebody doesn't like that. Sometimes we pray amiss. And sometimes even in our prayer, we are proud. I pray for you tonight that the Lord will give you understanding Amen. in your prayers. Amen. That the Lord will give you understanding Amen. in your walk with Him. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 
He said there is nothing wrong with God. We are the problem. Our sins have caused what? A split between God and us. So there's a barrier. Disobedience is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You, the only sin you know is fornication, adultery, stealing, murder. That's the sin you know. But I came to tell you, pride is very dangerous. The Bible said that God resists the proud and give a grace. So if you are proud, it is God himself that resists you. Not the witch in your family. It is God himself. He said he resists what? The proud and give it what? Grace to the humble. So if you have the spirit of humility working in you, oh, you are the friend of God. He will grant you grace upon grace to carry on. You will find grace for your needs in all times. In the midst of difficulties, you will find what we call grace. Oh, Paul said, for there's a thorn in my flesh. But what did God tell him? He said, my grace is what? Sufficient. So even in your suffering, there's an air condition that is blowing that you don't know. The same suffering that you went through or somebody went through that sent them to their grave. You, you are going through. But he said, my grace is what? Sufficient. Do you know what people go through? I've always said that if what Job went through, you have not been through before, then keep quiet. Because the only person that could comfort him, that was close to him, which was the wife, said that, curse God the word, and die. So what was left to him? You at least, you have something. Last month, we were at our father in the Lord and he said something. He broke my heart. We were in the meeting appointment. He said, for you, you, I am here for you. At least when you have an issue, you can call me. When you have any challenge, you can call me. But I said, me, who do I go to when I have an issue? And he broke my heart. I came to tell somebody tonight. Pride can destroy your life. I want to narrow it into these two. Disobedience and what? Pride. Some of us are very stubborn. When God gives specific instructions about certain things, we feel that we know better than him. There was an instruction on who to carry the word, the Ark of the Covenant. And something else was done. The result of it was what? Death. They said God killed somebody. But that was an act of what? This word? Obedience. I pray for you that the, the Lord will help you obey through and through. Amen. That if there are any traces of pride in your life, I will let it dry out tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. So he said what? There is nothing wrong with God. The wrong is what? In you. Your wrong-headed lives cause a split between you and God. Your sins got between you so that he doesn't what? He doesn't hear. That is why at my place of prayer, personally, I don't cease to pray for the spirit of humility. Some of you, as you are sitting there with a fine face, if God opens the door for you right now, all the ladies on the streets will be in trouble. And you know what I'm talking about. Don't try to pretend as if you are too spiritual. Because even men of God, this thing I'm talking to you happens to them. Some of you, God can test you with something small. In fact, you are waiting for God to open the door to prove a point to somebody. God has seen your heart. Because God deals with us according to what? The issues what? In our hearts. That is the reason why some of you are not seeing the hand of God. Because he has already seen what is in your heart. He has seen that when the door opens, Kai, you will never even enter into the what? His presence anymore. And it is sin. It is sin. It is sin. Let's move on quickly. I don't have time. I want to work this out quickly. He said what? Your hands are dressed in one in blood. Your fingers what? Dripping with what? Guilt. Your lips are what? Smeared with what? Lies. Your tongue, sw your tongue was swollen from what? Tell somebody, may the Lord help you. And may the Lord help me also. 
Hallelujah. Now, are we going somewhere? All right. Now, give me Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. You see, we long for the light, but yet we live in darkness. That is our problem. We long for what? The light. But yet, we find ourselves in darkness. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to understand some of these things. You know, the Bible said, and they continued in what? The apostles' doctrine. There's a doctrine of apostles that will teach you that you cannot go before the Lord and demand some things whilst you are still living in sin. But today, what do we see in the body of Christ? What do we see in the churches? Oh, come. Your problem will be solved. Meanwhile, you know you are living in sin. You know you are a disobedient child. You know that pride will not allow you to breathe. You know. But yet, they will tell you, come. Come. And that is the reason why when they are telling you to come, and things are not happening. You have to go for spiritual bath. It will shock you that people are in church and they still have charms in their pocket. Because they don't believe that the God that called them is able to what? To take care of them. May the Lord have mercy. He said, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze their way. All these veterans sharing what? As on the faith that you and I find ourselves, there were some people that pioneered. There were some people who were there before we came. And the Bible said that what? They are cheering us on. You can do it. We were able to do it. Therefore, you and I can also do what? Do it. And what is happening? It means we better get on with it. Strip down. Somebody says strip down. Start running. And never what? Never quit. The Bible said that he that puts his hand in the plow and looks back is not what? It's not what? Yes, you are not fit for the kingdom. This is a do and die affair. The solution to the problem that I earlier talked about is this. You see, you cannot say that you cannot say that you are a Christian, you are a child of God, and still live out of the kingdom. And that is why there is so much confusion in the body of Christ today, as I speak to you. <laughs> the leader of the church now, we have put him somewhere. And we are running our own church. Meanwhile, Jesus said, I will do what? I will build what? My church. And the gate of hell shall not what? Prevail. So Christ is the head of the church, true or false. Now, Christ is not here, but there's a representative here. And who is that representative? The Holy Ghost. True or false. Now, how can you run a church without the Holy Ghost? How can you run a church? Or how can you live a life without the leading of the Spirit? I've heard many believers say that, oh, eh, eh, it's not everything that is spirit. It's not everything that... If it is not spirit, what is it? And we have, we have allowed this thing to even enter our marriages. We are bringing philosophy. We are bringing peace. We are bringing all kinds of stuff. That was not the ancient part that was handed over to us. He said, we better get on it with what? Strip by stripping down. Somebody said, well, strip down. Start running. And never what? Quit. He said, no extra spiritual fat. No parasitic what? Sins. It's a command. What is King James saying? There's something there that King James said that I love. No what? Extra what? Spiritual what? Fat. King James will call it what? Weight. Ah, oh my God. He said, wherefore, see we also compass about with what? A great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside what? Every weight. Pride is a weight. 
It's a weight. Disobedience is a weight. If you want to know the kind of weights you carry that has become a problem for you, that has become an obstacle for you, go and check the fruit of the spirit and check the fruit of the flesh. Then you will know, listed in that order, we are carrying all kinds of weight. Unforgiveness is a weight. Bitterness is a weight. Pride is a weight. You can name it. It is saying that word. We should drop it. Tell somebody, drop it. And they say, we do well so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. How can you run when you carry weight? All these Olympics athletes that we have been watching on TV. Have you seen somebody running with a baggy jeans before? <laughs> yeah, but see, it's not funny. Everything you see in the natural, there is something in the spirit that you will find that will identify with what you see in the natural. Who has seen an athlete running with a baggy jeans or with a volunteer boot? Where will you go? How far will you go? You are carrying all kinds of weight. And because of this weight, you are not light. You are not light. Let's move on quickly. He said, look at what? Unto who? Give me King James. Um, MSG. Looking unto who? Jesus. Now, quickly, quickly. Technical man. Uh -huh. He said what? Keep your eyes on who? Who both began and finished the race, what? Yeah. We are in. So I told you that there were some people that began the race before you and I, we came. So don't think that you are the only one running the race. Don't think that you are the only one carrying the cross. I remember one time I was going through something. I went, I was going through pain. I went before the Lord. I said, Father, why? He said, shut up. Do you know where I'm taking you to? Since that time, I've never asked God why in my life. Even when I'm tempted to ask why, I hold my word, my lips. He says some people went through it. And when they went through it, they were given crowns. When you read the same Hebrews chapter 11, you will see the heroes of faith. You will see them listed there. How did they obtain a good report? They were there before we came. Yet, they obtain what? Good reports. He said, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished the race we are in. Study how what? He did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was what? He was at it. Some of us are distracted anyhow. Unless we don't hear that today, something is here, we'll run and go. There is a man of God that is giving anointing oil. So that when you put in your shop, the oil will be drying up. When, as it's drying up, money is coming. You rush to that place. And I can tell you, it will not work. Even if it works, it will work up to a time. In fact, it will add up to your sorrows and your trouble. Then you will come back again. You go to another place. Oh, this one now can give you some herbs. So that you can put under your pillow. When you sleep, your eyes will open. Oh, I met one sister. He said, Pastor, I went somewhere, they gave me Queen Esther oil. And the Queen Esther oil they gave to me is that when I use, when I use that oil, any man that gets close to me, I'll have favor in, that, in the sight of that man. I said, do you think, I said, have you read your Bible? Do you think that Esther obtained that favor by oil? <laughs> If it is oil, then what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? 
Now, look at what he's saying. He said he never would lost sight of where he was headed. That word, exhilarating, finished in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. So he was able to put up what we call cross. He was able to put up what we call shame. And whatever, you can name it. You, you are afraid of shame. Last August, yes, last month, we had a guest minister from Nigeria who came to preach in our place at our prayer tent. And when he came, he was talking about some deep things. How that when you are a leader, you can be insulted. Even your own followers can insult you. And it is part of the cross. As they did to Jesus. They insulted him. They spat on him. They flogged him. In case you are a leader here, you are a pastor. And you are afraid of what we call shame. Please wake up. You are still sleeping. Because it is part of the calling. If you run away from it, you go and meet it somewhere. So you better shut up and go through it. The moment the man of God gave a prophecy, he said, man of God, some people can even insult you. Can you believe that after three days I received a call and somebody was insulting me? It was then I remembered the word that came. That was my cross I need to carry. Do you think that Jesus could not do something to fight the people that wanted to kill him? You, your father is in the government house. When you have an issue, you pick up a phone and call him. What about Jesus? His father, who created the heavens and the earth, yet he needed to go through it. He kept quiet and he went through it because that was part of what? His assignment on earth. Tell your neighbor, it is not all shame that you must run away from. Let people know that the trousers that you have originally was not a faded jeans. But it's because of the pressure on that jeans that has made it what? Faded. Let people know that before you were a womanizer. Let them know that you were you an expert in stealing. That's why when people sit in church and they dress and they look so nice and so fine. <coughs> you, can't, you can't deceive me. Because we have all been somewhere before coming. So you are doing everything possible to cover your shame. You want to cover it. The more you are covering it, know for sure that you are extending your time. So Jesus came quiet and he went through what? Cross. The Bible said that he was the author of the faith that you and I find ourselves today. He was the author. Somebody authored it. And he was the author. And even the author went through what we call what? Shame. He went through what we call what? Cross and whatever. He said, and now he is there in the right place of honor, right alongside with God. I came to tell somebody tonight, there is nothing good that comes easy. Now everything is fast. We have fast food, fast prayers. That some people can even rise up and say, that, Pastor, I want you to pray for me and deal with this issue. So I'm buying you a box of milk, milo, fruit. You will wait for a very long time. Let's move on. He said, when you find yourself flagging in your feet, so there's a tendency that at some point in time, you'll be flagging in what? Your feet. Hello? Do I have witnesses in the house? Yes, sir. Don't come in. You can't deceive anybody with your spirituality. You can't deceive us with your tongues. You can deceive man, but you can't even deceive God. There is a time that will come when you know that mm, this thing is not easy at all. You'll be flagging. Sometimes those secret things that you have been doing, you find yourself going back. And sometimes I speak to our ladies. 
please, this word is not for only the men. It's for all of us. I speak to our ladies. Don't compromise. Don't sell your integrity and your pride for one box of pizza. Because for all you know, the person that is buying you that pizza, you carry something more than the person. But you don't know. What we call food can rob you of your place. Oh, go and ask Esau. Or you have forgotten. Have you forgotten that story? Food. 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 When we say it, they say we should not say, Pastor, this one. In the Bible, it happened. Food. He sold his bad word. Right. Because of food. Ladies, if you are hungry, please. I came to, that's why I took you to that earlier scripture. You will not be hungry forever. A time is coming. The Bible said that they will prepare a six square what? Meal before you. And then you'll be eating on the table of the king. A time is coming. When God has seen that you have gone through all of that, he will make it available. He will give you a man that will take care of you. Don't compromise. And give yourself. Is it car? Is it houses? What is it that a man can give to you that God cannot give to you? He said, even you parents know what to give good gifts to your children. How much more your father? Who has all things? Who created all things? Tell your neighbor, be wise. He said, when you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story word again. Now listen, I turn by word. That long litany of what? Hostility, he plowed through. In case you forget, go back to the story again. He said, who for what? The glory that was set before him. He did what? He despised what? The same. Tell your neighbor, what are you looking at? And what are you seeing? I see the glory of God. And I will definitely walk in that glory. They told us that we cannot do ministry. My own father said to the pastor that came to our house, he said, I'm taking your son to a retreat. He said, what have you seen in this man? Do you think he can be a pastor? But today, the very same vessel that was despised is the same vessel that will have to lay hands on, our, on my father before he goes to bed. You don't know what you have. If you know what you have, you will not compromise for everything. Some of us are compromising anyhow because we feel that time. See, this thing we call time, eh? Look, I have seen how people are deceived. They say we are in our season. The season of abundance. The season of glory. The season of what? Increase. The season of that. Let me tell you, you can be in your season, but it might not yet be your time. There is season. And there's what we call what? Time. You can step in that season. But if it is not yet your time, and you rush, they say a cow that will rush to America will come back as what? Corn beef. Let's move on. He said, in this all-out match word against sin, others have suffered far worse than what? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Others have got... You, you have not seen suffering, no? At least you, you have a condition here. What have you seen? I went for a meeting and I saw how it was a meeting for naughtiness, you know? Just as you have how the naughtiness behave here in, in Nigeria. That's how it is in Ghana. There was no instrument. There was no microphone. And how they praised and worship God. Their vibration. 
I came back and I told my people, I think we have to start disconnecting these instruments. <laughs> because even you with these instruments, it's like you are gentle. You want to show God that you have arrived. You know, the training that our Father and the Lord has given to us, we can survive anywhere. Where you go and they give you a good place to sleep, sleep. If they give you mat to sleep on, sleep. If they give you public toilets to go, go. But know for sure that it will not always be like that. There is more to life than what you think. Meanwhile, as far as God is concerned, the Lord told me personally, he said the list of my blessings that many people are chasing after is money. He said that is my list. As your apostle is now, if he comes to Ghana, he steps at the airport, apostle doesn't need money in his pocket. He will get everything he wants. That is the dimension I'm talking about. You are chasing money. You don't know. What we are after is the kingdom. Because we know that in this kingdom, the Bible said that when we seek it first, all other things shall be what? Shall be added unto us. So the dimension, the reason why I want to, I want to tell you that money is the least blessings of God. And I mean it and I know what, I have experienced it and I know what I'm talking about. There are places I go, I don't buy anything. Like here, you people are taking very good care of me. Where is Dennis? He will show up at my door. Do you need anything? I said, let me buy this thing. I said, no. That is the dimension. You buy everything. I pray that God will take you to that point. Yeah. There are some things you will not buy with your money. Yeah. Don't, don't confuse me with your amen. Believe it in your heart. Because as you believe it in your heart, that is what the Lord will see. There's a dimension of blessing. Oh, I've seen Mama in the house. Let's put our heads together for a moment. And let me tell you something. Mama will come to Ghana. She doesn't need to buy anything. There's a dimension of blessing. That I'm talking about. You, I said money is the least. He will ha she will have a good place. You know why? Because of his son. She will have a good place to sit. She will have good food to eat. Pedicure. Medicure. Massage. God wants to take us to. Don't settle for less. Now let's move on. He says, so don't feel sorry for what? If I continue, eh, there will be trouble here. Now let's move on. So now, the solution now to the problem is that we must look unto who? He is the author and the finisher. Whatever you ever go through, in fact, including the things that will happen to your life, he has already been through it. Somebody has been there before. And I've always said it over and over again that what you think you are going through, you are still better than somebody. Go to the accident world and see how people are struggling for their lives. You will see leg that is hanged in the air. You, you are here. Tell your neighbor, you are better than somebody. In case you are flagging in your faith, in case Satan is suggesting something to your mind, don't forget. Look unto who? Jesus. He said, follow how he did it. Item by what? Item. And that is how you come out. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now let me give you the last scripture. We move on quickly. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6. Now, 
Oh, Jesus. Strike something for me. Let thou king be lifted up. Oza. Oza. Hosanna in the highest in the Oh Lord King we lift up Hosanna Sing it again. strong somebody say God is strong and he wants you who to be what to be strong tell your neighbor God wants you to be strong see I am not speaking to you as somebody who is better than you I'm speaking to you as somebody who have witnessed see a time came when we have to walk to church, myself and my wife, and I didn't, I'd never forget about that time. The coming November will be our 10th year in marriage. Now listen. No, wait, wait. Wait. It is not an excitement. It is grace. A time came when we both have to walk to church. She has to fold her trousers because where we were moving from, there was so much dust. Walk long distance. At one point in time, on our way back, I couldn't. All of a sudden, there was blackout. And I had to sit on a rock. In fact, I went off. In the midst of that, God made provision. I remember those days because what did we do? That particular day, I remember we went to sweep the house of God. Clean the whole place. And the little money I had in my pocket, I said, Pastor, I'm going. Pastor said, um, can you please buy me water? I said, yes, sir. Then he said, do you have some coins? That was the last money in my pocket. And that last money I used to buy water for the pastor. Thinking that pastor will ask me, uh, have you eaten? If your pastor has not asked you whether you have eaten or not, don't be offended. Though. If there is food, you eat. If there is no food, we continue what? Marching on and running. And on my way back, I almost collapsed. See, if you have not seen some things before, you will not appreciate what God does in the lives of some people. Wait until you go there. You get to that point. That is the reason why some of us, we are sold out. I spoke to your pastor. And when I spoke to him, you know, I know a little about his story. People don't understand why he prays the way he prays. But I know, I don't need any man to tell me. 
it's a spirit to spirit word thing we share the same burden and i know at one point we were praying and somebody sent a message online say are you people mad what crime have you committed for praying 10 hours He said, what at all you want, what, at, what is it at all you want to tell God that you cannot tell him in 30 minutes? That you have to pray for 10 hours. He said, you poor are mad. You are crazy. I said, we love it. I will show you something in scripture today. You see, if people begin to challenge or argue with you on certain matters, go into the scripture. Because this is our manual. This is our manual. The Bible said that they continued in apostles' doctrine. In that doctrine, there was what? Prayer. There was fellowship. There was what? Breaking of word. That is koinonia. That is what? So, allow people to speak against the kind of prayers that you are praying. I have seen how men that despise prayers like this later on find themselves in situations that God cannot even help them. It will take the same people that are despising to go and help them. What you have here, value it. Got it! Some people wish they could pray like the way you are praying. And I know what I'm telling you. I came on the way to tell you that what you are doing, God is happy. Jesus says something. You know, I find these people, I find this group, I find apostle, everybody that does the will of what? Our father in heaven, I find him as family. That is, that is why I'm here. It's a family thing. He said, who is my brother? And who is my mother? It is that who does the will of what? My father. That is family. In the natural, they will tell you that your family is your blood. But I came to tell you that in the family of Christ, it is they that do that's what the will of the Father. They are the family that we have. He said, and that wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you to be strong. Quick, let's move on. We are going to pray. So take everything the master has set out what for you. I'm, I'm teaching you the solution to the problems. The confusion now you look unto jesus as you look unto him there are some weapons here you need to what apply he says that what so take everything the master has set out for you well made what weapons of what best what materials he said what and put them what to use so you will be able to stand up against what everything the devil throws what your way have you forgotten when the devil presented to Jesus? He said, ah, if you are the son of man, why don't you turn these stones into what? It's a test. Some of us have been tested in many ways and we fall into it. We fail! We fail. The devil can come and suggest something to you. There's a weapon here you will need to deal with that kind of thing. You don't need to prove anything. You don't need to prove any point to any man. What you have to do is to seek to please God, the one who called you. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, word that proceed out of the mouth. Meanwhile, Jesus was what? He was very what? Hungry. Can you pass that test? In case you have failed, there is room for what we call receipt. There is hope for you. Now, look at what is going on. He said what? And put them to you so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil brings. Uh-huh. What are the weapons? He said, this is no afternoon what? Athletic contest that we will walk away from and forget about in the couple of hours. He said, this is for what? Keeps a life or death fight to what? To finish. Can I shock you? every promotion comes with an attack and we know it 
So for some of us, when God opens a door, that is not the time. Even when we are happy, our eyes are open. Even when we are rejoicing, our eyes are so open. Because Satan will come after you. I have seen how great men have fallen. Because they did not know how to use these weapons. They said he got an opportunity to travel in the US. And when he came back, he is now a drug addict. Meanwhile, he was part of the choir before going to the States. <laughs> Let it never be said of you that the doors that the Lord opened for you turn into something that we cannot describe. Let it never be said of you. You will be able to stand the walls of the devil. Hey! These are the weapons you need. He said this is for keeps. Because any stage, every at every stage of your life, Satan will come. When you get married, he will come. When you buy a car, he will come. When you build a house, he will come. So don't think that you are in this thing for some something. You want something, you are looking for something. When you get it, you disappear. <laughs> you are deceiving yourself. It's a life and what? And he said what? We fight to finish. Somebody say, we fight to finish. Fight. Against the devil. And all what? And all his angels. Let's move on. I want to bring it. So he said be what? Do you know that the Bible said that before Jesus was tested, he prepared for that test. How did he prepare for that test? fasting and prayer food food will be our problem this thing called food to pass a test he needed to prepare for that test 40 days prayer and what fast just to prepare for a test <laughs> he said you are up against far more than you can handle on your own he said, take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you will still be what? On your feet. Let's move on. He said what? What are the weapons? Number one, truth. Number two, righteousness. Righteousness. <laughs> There are some battles you can conquer with truth. Truth. Righteousness can let the devil flee from you. <laughs> I have a, let's move on. What? Can you imagine? Peace is also a weapon. The Bible said he's the prince of what? May God grant you peace. Amen. Let's move on quickly. What? This one is non negotiable. He said, By this, our elders obtain what? A good report. Let's move on quickly. And what? Salvation. He said, Are more than what? Words. Learn how to apply them. You will need them throughout your what? Your life. You will need them at some point in your life. That's what the Bible says. It said what? Throughout what? Throughout your life. God's word is an what? Undispensable what? Weapon. It means that the word of God, you cannot, you cannot do anything without the word of God. There is nothing you will do and there's something he says here in verse 18 which I love so much he said in the same way prayer is what essential in this ongoing what warfare that's why I say I love what you do you don't understand I love it if you are a scholar 
you understand the word essential it depends on the school you attended if you attended government school maybe you might not understand the cry in that word you know you might not understand it you will need the spirit to decode that word essential he said in the same way as the word of god is good truth righteousness salvation faith he said prayer is what essential essential and he says what pray what pray hard and what <laughs> pray hard the altar of our faith prayed what hard the bible said he prayed until the sweat that came out of his body was like what was like blood what are you talking about When I see people speak against prayer, I, I, sometimes I, I don't know. I don't even know what to tell them. The one to him, we are here. Even him. At that point, the Bible said he prayed. He prayed. He prayed. And something came out of him. Pray hard and pray long. That kind of prayer will move you from one relative to another. He said, they that do business in deep waters, they are the ones that see the wonders of the Lord. You cannot do business in shallow waters and see some things. What you want to see, you can find them in the deep. Your 30 minutes, one hour cannot help you. I have even discovered that the 10 hours is not enough. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind. Rise up on your feet. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yah. Your name is Yah. Your name is Yah. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yah. You are the miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle. You will do a miracle. A miracle. You are the destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Papa, come and change our destiny. Let it be a 
your prayer, somebody. From wherever you are, if you are watching us online, there's a weight you need to drop tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. Kata yadaba, yose ke bantaba, mako se yadaba, kwa yadaba, yate ka pato yaba, ika braka ba shadaba, le ka pato yaba kaba. Drop every weight. Drop every weight. Drop every weight. Shaka tataba, ika pato kaba kaba, aka ba shayaba, le ko se ke bantaba, aka ba yabe.